So hi folks, Neil Tate again. A couple of years ago we did a, a light up and run of Merlin and it proved to be quite successful. So today, after we've had Merlin out on the track, John Phillips, our video master, has decided we'll do a video of shutting down or hostling Merlin. Hostling is just the end of the day's run and clearing out the fire, doing an examination of the locomotive, washing out the ash pan and then blowing the boiler down. And we'll go through that as we get there. So we've got it over the ash pit at present. My first task now is to make sure that the boiler's got plenty of water in it, which we do have. And I'll just clean out the fire now. To clean the ash out, we just use the old firing shovel that puts the coal in. But at the end of the day, the same shovel gets a dual purpose of shoveling the ash out. So we'll go through now. We've got the firebox door open and we'll just go through the process of shoveling the ash out onto the ground here. Okay, we'll go through the process of shoveling out what ash we've got left in here. Okay. Because the trick with this is, is to not step back and put your foot in it. You know, rubber soles don't like getting a bit of heat on them. Anyway, we'll continue on getting rid of this. Not much left in there. Okay, after today's run, I'm just going to take the gauge glass covers off and just give them the inside a bit of a clean. They do get a bit of soot on them from the fire. And just give them a nice clean inside so the next time we steam we've got nice clean gauge glass covers. Oh, it gives you a bit of a, very gently the gauge glass tube itself a bit of a wipe. You see the water level showing us the indication of the water levels about halfway up the back head of the boiler so the boiler's got plenty of water in it. Okay one of our chaps up here some time back made this rather unique patented device and it just clips into the end of the fire of the water hose and it's just the ideal thing for washing out the ash pan. I'll show you where that goes in a minute we'll turn the hose on. We just put out any heat that's in there, give that a good wash down. Underneath the ash pan we've got an ash pan slide that we open up and that allows any ash that's in there to wash out. Okay, we've got the grate clean now. I've shoveled out what ash was still on the grate. I've hosed out the ash pan because in the process of shoveling out the ash from the ash pan from the grate, a little bit of it's fallen down into the ash pan which we've just hosed out here. So I'll shut the ash pan slide. We must be careful when we're in running that that ash pan slide has to be shut all the time because any ash that then falls down through the grate into the ash pan will fall out through an opening at the bottom created by the open slide and it'll fall out with ash onto the track we'll burn sleepers and we can set fire to a bit of the country around it which we don't want so we've got to be careful to make sure that ash pan slides shut all the time so now we're in a situation where we've got the firebox is clear nothing on the grate the ash pan's empty we can now steam the loco onto the turntable and bring it back down onto the blowdown track outside the shed where we can then blow the boiler down. What we would do normally if this was being run every day of the week, we wouldn't worry blowing down the boiler. But because it's only being used maybe once every three or four weeks, we empty out the boiler, drain the boiler of all the water, and we've got two drain plugs or washout plugs at the back end of the boiler in the cab that we take out. This allows the boiler then to vent out any heat and dry out the entire internal part of the boiler so as that there's no deterioration and there's no moisture left inside the boiler. So I'll go through that when we go through and blow down the boiler down.
what we're in the process of doing now, the engine has been hustled if you like, it was the hustling was a term, was an interesting term, it was a term that was used as a carryover from the old days of the stagecoaches in England and there were gentlemen employed at various stagecoach liveries where the coach horses would be changed over and these gentlemen that worked at these livery stables were called ostlers and they looked after the horses. They prepared the horses for the next run of the stagecoach but they also wiped down, cleaned down, brushed and fed the horses that had come in off the stagecoach. A carryover of the, the steam locomotive days was the term hostler. It was a term used in America for quite a long time with steam locomotives. I think even diesels now still have hostlers at their de locomotive depots. But here in Melbourne we also had hostlers with the Victorian Railways and they did the same task. A locomotive would come over off the pit, or onto the pit I should say, off, uh, off a run and these lads would then hop on with a junior fireman, clean the fire, note any bookings that needed to be done on the locomotive, take coal, take water, fill the sandboxes up and then put the locomotive at the depot where they were directed to by the foreman. We've short-circuited this quite a lot nowadays with this. We've still prepared this locomotive for being shut down. The process of now, we've got the locomotive is totally clear, there's no ash in the ash pan, the firebox, so we'll now go through the shutdown procedure of the boiler. We'll drain the, blow, the boiler by opening the two drain, drain valves or blowdown cocks which are situated in the cab and they drain down from the lowest part of the boiler which is right down at the bottom end of the firebox which is lower than the water level in the barrel so as that by the time we don't see any more water and steam coming out the blowdowns we know that the boiler is completely empty. I'll show you now where these two blowdown valves are situated in the cab and they've got a little protector plater over them so as to stop them being accidentally opened whilst in running. The boiler now has been emptied of steam pressure, water, and now I'll empty out the, the water that's remaining in the tanks because again we're not using the locomotive every weekend. We drain out the water that's remaining in the tanks just as a, a security measure just to show that there's no water that's going to rot through the inside of the tanks. So that's connected up, this tank is connected up to the other tank by a balance pipe and there's only one drain which is on this side but whatever water is in the other tank will also drain out through this drain valve. One of the things we also do with this locomotive I mentioned before, there are two inspection plugs or washout plugs on the back head of the firebox. I'm just taking these plugs out now. The last task we do in putting the engine away is clearing out any ash that's in the smoke box. The smoke box is one of the important parts of the boiler. And as you can see in there, you can see the tube plate, which is the front tube plate. There's a back tube plate in the firebox, and there's the fire tubes that bring the heat and the ash and the soot through and the soot accumulates in the bottom of the smoke box due to the action of the exhaust coming up from the cylinders and going up through the funnel it creates a, a partial reduction in pressure or a partial vacuum in the smoke box to draw the fire to have a section of the fire so we'll clean out the, the smoke box with the ash we'll just turn this on it makes a bit of noise
after we've cleaned out the smoke box up here we don't shut the smoke box door completely we just leave it ajar to let the whole boiler gradually cool down it helps to even the temperature right through the whole boiler and firebox through the smoke box and just vents the, any moisture or heat that might be still inside the boiler out to atmosphere and the boiler just dries down nicely so when we get to steam it up next time which could be next week or it could be quite a mere months time the, the boiler is in a totally safe condition there's no moisture in it there's no accumulation of rust or any sediments in it and the locomotive boiler is just ready to face another day's running ok all we've got to do now is to wait till the tanks are empty so we can give the engine a final wipe down and push it back into the shed ok folks well that's about it for the preparation of the locomotive for service as we saw in the earlier video some time back and this is the, the end of the video if you like the putting of the locomotive away after a day's run it's a delightful locomotive to work on and it really is akin to its big brothers in every aspect of the field it's a great locomotive and it performs exactly the same as what a big locomotive would so it doesn't matter how big a locomotive it is this is the bottom end of the spectrum but you've got locomotives running in America that are, are enormous this would sit inside the firebox by three or four times it's a great little locomotive it's been a pleasure to show you these videos of how we put the locomotive into service and how we put it away as I say all we're doing now is waiting for the tank to empty so we can push the locomotive put in back into the shed and she can go to sleep for a couple of weeks thanks for watching please like subscribe leave a comment and click the links below for more videos